Okay, if you're watching the replay, you may want to fast forward a little bit because I'm starting a little bit early and we are waiting for people to show up. And of course, you know, you always got to come in a little bit early to get prepared. Okay, we're going to hook up to our laptop now. Just to make sure everything's connected and... I got my glasses this time. I need to find my little stand. Ugh. Okay. And also I'm going to plug in my new camera or microphone to see. All right, can we hear? Let's find out. Hello? Hello, hello? Seems to be recording. Oh, there's that pop again. I was really hoping the new microphone would take care of that. my laptop all right just wait a few minutes see if the announcement goes out because it's not quite seven yet which means I can set my stuff over here open this little goodie <laughs> Sure, I have everything ready. Got that. Set that aside. Wrapper. Alright. So tonight. Am I not live live? Usually I would have like one person by now.
All right, sorry about that. If you're watching the replay, I didn't have the Anyone Can Watch feature selected. It's kind of weird that it did that. Okay, so is it live now? They changed the settings on Streamlabs. So you have to go, when you first set up, it doesn't actually go live right away. You have to click on the other bar across the screen that uh, allows you to update to event info. And then you can go into there and click anyone. Hopefully now people are getting the announcement. Maybe I should subscribe to my own channel so that I get it. I think it's visible now. I hope. Well, we'll give it another couple minutes. Hopefully I can edit this and then crop out the part that is <laughs> really bad. <sighs> but I think I might turn off. Maybe I won't. It's actually kind of just right bright. Ah, all right. Yay! There you guys are. I accidentally exited the screen where I could see the comments like a wonderful dork that I am. Okay, live chat, pop out chat so I can see it nice and big. All right. Hello, Chow and Cindy and Aline and Jonna and Karen. Thank you all for joining Sorry, I'm a little late. Um, Streamlabs updated their app, and so I thought it was going live straight away, and I realized that it wasn't, and then I accidentally hid it from everybody, so I had to hunt down those bits. Does it sound okay? I think the popping noise is still there, even though I have my new microphone plugged in. Hi, Miss Nancy. Thank you for joining tonight. Pop up my chair. I feel like I'm sunk on the floor there. How's everybody doing? I'm so excited. I did an experiment last night. I can't wait to show you. Yes, there is still popping. I think it's the app and how it goes through to YouTube, I think. Because it doesn't do that with any of my other recording. Here, let me, let me push that a little bit further out of the way. See if we can't get it further away from me. Hi, everyone. Sherry, welcome. Just got off work. As long as I don't get paged. We'll cross our fingers that you don't get paged back into work. All right. So let me go 
overhead because I want to show you some really cool stuff that I got. Oops, switch camera. There we go. All right. <laughs> so I did do a little video yesterday and I showed off my uh, blue knot rubber stamp from Miss Nancy. This I'm so excited. Oh, I didn't put it on that one because I need a new one of those. But you just put these little bitty magnets on there, like so. And then you got your handle, like so. And then if you're gentle and pull off the lid without touching, then you don't have to get your fingers in this mucky muck. Which, let me tell you, that saves me. Because I don't know about you, but I always get a lot of ink built up around there. I'm too lazy to clean it so I'm super excited I am gonna invest in more of these so that I can put them on all of my Simon Hurley inks <laughs> I'm so excited thank you Nancy hear a bit of popping noise yeah I'm sorry about that guys upside down I sure am okay okay that is weird I'm upside down there but not there come on there we go I think just had to get YouTube caught up with that all right no no twitchy twitchy which is funny because it didn't change at all in my my phone just on YouTube there. Is that better everyone? Um, hi Sandy, thanks for joining. Hi Lee, thanks for coming in tonight. Yeah, <laughs> white nails. Be <laughs> I wasn't going to do my nails today because I knew I wouldn't have time to finish, but I snagged one and it that irritates me. So this is prep. I am almost done. Well, I am. All I got to do is paint them now. But this takes me three hours just to get them ready to paint. But they're going to be red and green. Aline says she hates being on call too. Yeah, I don't. I don't doubt that at all. Yeah, Jonah, after we moved from Washington to uh, Ohio, I couldn't afford to have my nails done, so I started doing them myself. It's very time consuming. All right. I appreciate you for popping in, Lee, but you should probably go nine eye. <laughs> Is your phone volume all the way down? No. Um, when I plug my microphone, okay, let me double check. So the microphone volume is up all the way. Let me turn that down because I don't know if you guys can still hear. Okay, I'm going to turn down my, my cell phone. Okay, can you guys still hear me? My cell phone is turned down. Can you guys? Okay, you, got, you can still hear me. Is there still popping noise? Okay, can I give you a reasonable place for my nails? Um, I spend a little too much money on my crafty stuff. I still can't afford it. Yes, still popping. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the volume on the mic a little bit. Okay, I'm going to move that over. Can you guys still hear me for that? I appreciate you all helping me work this out. Okay, so you can still hear me. That's good. And still popping. Ooh, you're such a bad, bad microphone. All right, so I'll just have to live with the popping. I apologize, guys. Um, maybe when I get to a thousand subbies and I can record straight from 
YouTube, we won't have that problem. <laughs> but anyways, I, again, thank you for the Blue Knight rubber stamp. Um, oh, I forgot to post the link in the description. Okay, so seeing the mic. Does that sound any better? Thank you, Nancy. She posted the Blue Knight rubber stamp. Get one of these. It came with three of these and one of these for a little starter kit. It's worth it, guys. It's worth it. Okay, but my other fabulous thing is... <laughs> Thanks, Aline. Um, I got my first bottle of Barely Art Glue. And it comes with the little crazy pointy tips. And if you're in the FSC, Miss Gloria Wolf, if you look her up, she makes the little pins to go in. Oh my goodness, look how cute that is. Maybe a little less popping. Okay, I'll leave that out. But if you guys can still hear me, that's great. Oh, <laughs> Miss Gloria sent. Oh. That is so cute. Okay, this is really nicely packaged. I'm so excited. I haven't even <gasps> haven't even looked at it. Oh, I requested greens and clear. Look at that. Oh, it's so stinking cute. It's going to look so pretty on top of my glue. Look at that. Her price includes shipping. It is so worth it. Look how beautiful that is. It just shimmers. Thank you, Gloria. Oh, I'm so thankful. I, I kind of need more glue, right? So I can have more of these. Is that how that works now? <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. But this is stinking cute. Look at that. What a great way to send a gift card to your friends and family. For the holidays. Super, super cute. Although nobody's getting that. It's mine. It's mine. Okay. So I'm super, super excited. I got my new papers and I wanted to do some experiments. Now, my first one I'm going to show you. Where is my other sheet of that? Okay. Nope. I've lost the sheet of Yupo. There it is. Okay. So, I have the Brie Reese. Um, the Brie Reese waterproof paper that comes in rolls. And when it comes out, it literally is curled like this. If you have the mink and put it on setting one, your lowest heat setting, you can iron it out. Unfortunately, if you turn up the heat, it's going to wrinkle it. Okay. And I was kind of bummed, but I was like, all right, well, at least it's ruined. I'll try and send it through the printer. When I sent it through the printer, it curled up because it went in like this, but with the two wrinkles. Okay. See if it fits in the Barely Art glue. Okay, just a second. So, um, the, uh, it does iron out pretty good with the mink. And again, setting one. And so I used my ruined piece and sent it through my laser printer. It curled up super bad again. And the ink, um, it has a lot of missed spots. Almost like it cooked overcooked it's kind of bubbled up a little bit um unfortunately you cannot foil it because you need the higher heat and when you send it through on the higher heat it's gonna really mess up your paper so you can use it to flatten out a piece but i would not recommend putting it on anything higher than your lowest heat setting by the way, the glue is not acid free. Okay, that's good to know. I won't use it in my um, my journals or journal scrapbooks and stuff. Okay, so get that little bit out of there. 
and let's see pop off these okay they send you a nice little pin in there okay and so you have your other lid you can pop on the precision doodad grab our pretty pretties Ooh. and down it goes <laughs> so it does work in that one oh and let's see about this little shorty one Okay, I'm trying to be a brute and just shove it in there. It actually twists. There's a little twisty mechanism on there. Sorry about that. Okay, and then this little one. Oh, it doesn't go down that tip, though. So it doesn't work for the little metal tip, unfortunately. But it does work in this one. I will probably not be using that one. <laughs> I use this one. And it goes quite a ways down there too. It's actually sticking out the other end. So that'll be good. It'll keep it nice and clean. There. Does their needle fit in there? My hands I'm having a lot of shaky issues lately. But yep, those work. What paper was that? This was the Brie Reese waterproof paper. I use it for my alcohol inks. She has her own brand. I only got a couple of hers. Um, but uh, she does have some really fun stuff. Yeah, it won't fit that little dinky one. But you know what? I like it just the same. So I'll have to get that other one with um, the glitter. Oh, yeah, that glittery stuff. Okay, so Brie Reese. Um, same with Yupo paper. I would not recommend sending it through on hot settings, okay? Let me scoot you guys out of the way. It's not you, though. Okay, but I did do some sample runs. Hello from Illinois. She's, thank you for joining Susie. Did I miss anything? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Hi, Craft with Barbara. And no, I didn't get your card yet. So that's three cards that my post lost this month. Because I've noticed everybody else in my group has gotten all their cards, but I haven't. I only got the one from Carol and from um, Bonnie. So how sad is that? Oh, there's that. Okay. So if you're new to foiling and you found Nancy like I did. Sherry didn't get one of hers either. Hi, Lori. Thanks for coming. Yeah, the postal is not being very cool. But um, if you're new to foiling and you don't have a lot of money to invest, but you have printer paper, um, I'm going to show you a couple of the less expensive things that you can foil, though I wouldn't recommend <laughs> because, you know, you want good quality um, cards that are going to withstand everything. But this here is just a ream of 20 pound basic Walmart special. You know, it's like four bucks for a whole pack of paper. Um, in my little experiment, I did the same printout just so I could fill out the page. I am going to use those on something else. <laughs> okay. And so it foiled pretty good. It's weird. It's got a weird texture in it. Now, to be fair, I'm using the Heidi Swap Foil. But yeah, it gave it a weird little texture. So if you're just trying it out and you just want to see if it's going to be something for you, technically you can use 
your everyday printer paper. Okay, I just <laughs> I, I'm going for the the gold here because I want to be able to have sellable pieces of art basically because to me that's what that is it's a piece of art and you can color it in and everything but uh yeah it's a uh, it foiled pretty good for the regular printer paper okay so then i got the new accent opaque 65 and i like that this will go in the bottom tray i don't have to manually feed it it's a lightweight, okay. It uh, did give itself a little bit of a curl in there, but it's paper. It'll flatten back out. And then this one, see this one, it foiled much better. It doesn't have as much texture to it like this one does. And I did do the rigorous dusty dusty. I wanted these to have a good example as if I was going to make cards with these. So they got the dusted the paper. I dusted the foil. I dusted the carrier sheet. And before I cleaned or started this, I cleaned my work surface and made sure it was dust free. So, and this is the 65 pound. Um, it's the Accent Opaque, which you can find in Nancy's Amazon shop under uh, specialty papers. Her Amazon shop is also linked in the description. I'm really excited to use the Accent Opaque mainly for my examples because I have to do trial runs to see how stuff is going to look. And this is a really great white paper. I'm really impressed with this and it's smooth. It is very, very smooth. Good, good paper. Hi, Lena. Thanks for joining us tonight. So, and this one here, I guess I should have showed that too. Um, the print quality, even on this. No, they both have that weird little texture. So, both the papers take the black really, really nicely. There's no skips or misses in it. So, it, that means it's going to foil pretty good. So, that's your basic 20 pound. If you have nothing you can still get by paper. This is a little bit up uh, in price compared to the 20, but compared to what you would get at Walmart or anywhere, it's comparable in price, but this is really white compared to that other stuff. Um, and again, it's way smooth. It's super smooth, a good foil. I'm liking that. So this is going to be a really good, um, sample paper for me now this is the nina 80 um i was using this one a lot and i'm switching it out for the opaque 65 because like i said i can get it through the bottom tray but this is a good middle thickness it is again very smooth i like how it ink blends i've ink blended it a bazillion times it takes the color really well and it is white. It's just a different kind of white. This one to me, Nina, is more white white. Whereas the accent has this um, a blue hue to it. So it's really, really pretty to me. I like it. So that is that one. So this is the Nina. And I have foiled this stuff a bazillion times. And oh, I tell you. It foils beautifully every single time and it's even more smooth than even the last one no there yeah it's super ugh. I wish you guys could see it in person it's really pretty so this is the Nina oops put these in order because I would like to do a little bit of ink blend blending um and the more you pay the little bit extra for the thicker stuff but in the end it is gonna save you a lot of headache because like i said it does foil beautifully so that's nina 
Now, I did invest in a little bit of Bristol. I haven't used it yet to ink blend, so I'm excited to do that. Um, you'll, <laughs> you'll see there's a lot of missing over here. Well, that was me erasing because I wrote on it and then printed, and uh, so I had to erase stuff, so it erased. Hi, Tracy. Yeah, and Nancy says Himilco and Nina are her two favorites for foiling, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, I'm ordering the Himilco tomorrow. <laughs> I ordered it the other, last week. I ordered it, Amazon lost it, had to wait for the refund so I could order new paper and then forgot to put it in the basket when I ordered the, um, uh, the accents and the acetate. <laughs> I was a dork. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. So the Bristol, it printed really good. Um, it's again, very smooth. Unfortunately, Bristol, it comes in a bigger pack, which I don't know if it's unfortunate. You just have to trim it down a little bit and then you have pieces for sentiments. Stamps really good. I'm excited to see how it's going to blend because not all of my designs I foil. So I do a lot of blending and coloring, watercolor, stuff like that. But this is the Bristol. Let's see how the Bristol foils. Okay, so I have a little bit of missing. Now, here's the other thing I did all of my examples at the same heat, same everything. So we're up to 100 pounds on the Bristol. Technically, at this point, I should have turned up the heat because it's thicker paper. You're going to need more heat. Cindy says the Bristol blends fantastic. Fabulous. I can't wait to see. No, Nancy, I have not. Blend yeah, I'm going to go through and do a sample blending on all of them just to see how they go. Okay. But it did foil. Again, I would probably recommend going up. I did the Mama Mink on three, so I'll probably do anything higher than my 80 is going to be a four. But I did everything today at three. I'm super excited. Bristol, however, would be kind of expensive just for foiling. I'm hoping that's going to be more of an art project paper for me because it is kind of a spendy paper. Yes, Bristol is very expensive for foiling, but I'm I'm going to be looking into other art forms. I'm going to test it with water and everything too on my my own time. Now, this is the paper that I've been using the longest. Um I just ran out of it. This is literally the last 12 by 12 sheet I had. <laughs> it's the Park Lane 110 pound. I got it at Joann's with a really great coupon, so it was worth it for me to buy. Unfortunately, Park Lane has a grayish hue to it, so it's not white at all. Okay, Nancy says use Hilmilco for foiling and blending, best value and quality. Yeah, I'm excited. I'll be getting that hopefully by the end of the week to try that out. But if you're on a budget, it doesn't hurt to get what you can afford. And if Park Lane is what you can afford, make it work for you, okay? Just ink blend it, do some fancy stuff on it. It prints decent. Again, we're at 110, so you're gonna have a couple of spots that might not stick because, you know, it's thicker paper and you're like cramming it through. And I know it does foil because like I said, I've been foiling forever. And as you can see, my printer prints crooked. It grabs it and I've been playing with it, trying to clean it and stuff. I've got to do some serious work with it, but it printed super crooked, which is funny. This one printed super crooked, but look at this one. The accent opaque, 100, <laughs> this stuff <laughs> right now. <laughs> This accent opaque, 120 pounds, people, 120 pounds. This stuff 
has no flex in it whatsoever. It is so smooth. I'm just, when I took it out of the box, I was, ooh, I def, <laughs> again, not recommended for foiling, but if you run out and you have it on hand, yes, you can. Okay, I will not be foiling on it, although it took it really, really well, even at a lower heat setting. It, you can definitely see it's got more misses. It's a little bit more textured. If I had the heat up, it would have worked really good. <laughs> yes, petting your paper is a thing. Because <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, when you score it for a card, does the cardstock start to break apart? Um... I don't know. Let's find out. I don't think so. Because a lot of people use the one, uh, the heavier stuff. Okay, so we're going to set this in here. We're going to grab our little doodad. So we score and flip. So I'm going to try and get this. My paper's crooked. <laughs> oh yeah, that was like crooked as a jaybird. That's all right. It's just a sample. Okay, so a little extra pressure. Okay, then you you score, you flip, then you fold. And nope, it looks great. It's not cracked or anything. And on the inside, it's your normal little buckle. But that is going to make some fantastic, fantastic um, Oh, yeah, Cindy Decker says that I keep a spreadsheet of my different papers to track weight and grams, targeted uses, and unit cost per sheet. That is a fabulous idea because if you're <laughs> if you're looking to um, sell your cards, you definitely want to know what you're putting into them because you don't want to undersell your stuff. But that, yeah, I'm really <laughs> I'm really excited for this paper. Um, if you now the ink is breaking off there again. Printing on 120, that, like I said, that went through straighter than my other one did. Oh, no, that's Park Lane. Oh, that's Park Lane. Sorry, I folded the wrong one. Let's see what this one is. That was the 110. And you'll want to make an extra pass. Usually, I just make one pass. Flip and fold. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is the 120. My apologies. But again, no. No cracking whatsoever. And see, this would be so nice. If I could get my printer to print straight, I could do single print cards. <laughs> Literally send it off like that. That would be so fabulous. Print, fold, and send it off. Barbara says, I have better luck if you just fold by hand. My folding by hand sucks. <laughs> I, I like, this is my newest edition. He was only $8. But uh, I like this little stopper in there. I don't really like the cutting feature. I feel it's not accurate enough. But, man, I do a whole bunch and stick them in there. It's a nice, sturdy platform to get it folded in there. But, yeah, isn't that just... And on the inside, it is a nice, clean fold. No cracking on the outside. Looks good. And, again, that is the Accent 120, which I'm going to be using for card bases. But, again, if you run out... And you're like, I need to do one card. Yes, you can print and foil it. Just turn up the heat 
a little bit higher than normal so you get a better adhesion but oh that's so fabulous am i here am i here i'm here i'm here to this stuff <laughs> these are in nancy's um specialty paper okay this is the laser printer quality laser printer quality apollo brand Jerry thinks the package to Nancy got lost. See, that's terrible. It's still sitting in Phoenix. Shame on them. Okay, so this is the Apollo transparency paper. It's, you get 50 sheets. Um, and it's, it's thin. You can tell it, it's a it's a thin thin item, okay? But of course, it's meant to go through the laser printer. Therefore, it holds the ink really nicely. Are are we ready to see if it foils? Okay, I need you to let go though, because that's the other one. Okay. Now here's the thing. This is how I sent it through the mink. I put it in regular copy paper and put it in the plastic sleeve, okay? So, you, I feel like you need to make the sandwich. Um, I was afraid to put it plastic on plastic in through the roller. So, I put the copier barrier, folded it in half, sent it through, okay? I'm excited. I haven't even looked. I just, I printed them, foiled them last night, and I, I had to walk away. Oh, <laughs> look at it. Oh, isn't that just stunning? You can make window cards. You could, oh my goodness, you could put this as a shaker card. I would have to do that a little bit smaller. Put it as a shaker card and have all the little bits flowing behind there. Um, This is a Heidi Swap foil. I just ran out of it. So pretty much any toner foil you have will work. Oh, that is just... It turned out really beautiful. Okay. Again... I didn't think to write down the price, but this is a 50 pack of the Apollo laser. It's designed for the laser printer. Okay. When you order it, this is what it looks like. It is in Nancy's Amazon shop. But before you put this in your cart, I want to show you the other one I got. Okay. Um, this this is how it comes it just they crammed all of the little transparencies in there and they shipped it off like that okay so just one momento because this is the apollo and it oh um and you have to be very careful with this lots of dusty dusty because it is static cling pet hairs, dust, everything is like, oh yes, we're just going to join this little picture here, okay? So definitely dusty, dusty that. Okay, so I'm going to just slide those into there. <laughs> oh, those are so fabulous. Now this is the 100 count pack for writing, okay? Now when you order it, out of Nancy's Amazon shop. It looks like this, but down here at the bottom, it says writing or something for writing. Um, they're designed for those dry erase markers, okay? That's all it says, dry erase. It's five mil, okay? This is very important, five mil clear. This particular brand is what I tried. I would not... I, I took a chance and sent it through my printer. Oh, and here's another thing. I don't know if all printers do this, okay? But my printer, if I send fancy paper through, like my photo paper through the very first sheet 
when I very first turn it on, it puts like little heat marks in it. If I do a plain piece of copier through first, everything prints fine after that. So if you turn on your machine, do a test run with regular copy paper before you send your acetate um, transparencies through, okay? Just to make sure the heat is evenly distributed on your first run, okay? Again, that is your first run with photo paper, transparencies, anything like that. Just do, turn on your printer, run one plain cheapy piece of paper through there just to make sure the heat is evenly distributed okay because you don't want to send this through and get those two little melty marks in there Ugh, it would not be good okay so this is the transparency unfortunately it does give a little curl okay um where's my other one the one meant for the laser okay that one doesn't have as much curl, but it has a slight curl. Very, very slight. So can you live with the curl? I think so, because you put a little bit of tape there, 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 or a little bit of glue, something that will get that to stick down, you know, and it's going to pull it down. It doesn't, um, it did have a little bit more missing Okay, and I wasn't sure if that was me touching it right out of the printer, but I'm excited to see how well it foiled. Again, I wrapped it in a basic printer paper, okay? Whew, I'm hoping this works because that 100 pack is way cheaper than the Apollo. Oh, it foiled. I have a, I have a complete miss there, but that looks like a printer miss. Oh no. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really excited and then kind of not, but <laughs> if you have it on hand, you can use it. Um, it literally just pulled the foil or the toner sheet off the page. Okay. So the toner doesn't stick a hundred percent. Okay. So <laughs> I've got a couple little misses where the toner was actually pulled right off the page. But if you're in a pinch, that works. Now here's why I'm excited for this transparency. One, I use it for storing my stamps. I tape a piece of transparency to a piece of paper and do like this and put all my stamps in there. That's how I store my stamps. So that's an inexpensive way to do that. Two, even though I may not be able to foil on it, but <laughs> for just two little misses like that, I mean, everything else caught for two little misses, I might foil on that. <laughs> I might, you never know. But um, this transparency, because it's cheaper, okay, you get 100 versus 50. Do you know how many alcohol ink backgrounds you can make with this? Right? That's a lot of alcohol ink fun right here. Yeah, it's probably, Nancy says it's too smooth and it's, it's possible. Um, it is, it is slick. It's beautiful. And, um, it's thicker than the um, Apollo. You can definitely feel the weight in this 5 mil versus the Apollo. Okay. Which got me thinking, if I can print it and I can foil it, foiled on a 3, what else can I do with it? <laughs> and yes, my friends... Maybe you're thinking, well, what else can you do with that? So I'm going to show you my boo-boo first because, you know, trial and error. <laughs> I was heat embossing it, right? I, <laughs> I got a little too close with the heat gun. <laughs> As you can see, 
because I was just fiddling around. I was holding the paper like this and I was heating it from below. And instead of taking my time and having a thicker piece of paper, um, it warped it, okay? It, it, <laughs> I almost burnt my house down <laughs> and I warped it. But then I was like, okay, I got to do better because when I started over here, it was going so well until I got over here. And then I don't know what happened. I took a nap or something because I did it again. Okay. And I, I took my time. It will take you longer to heat and boss, but you can do it. There's very minimal uh, warpage, okay? But you even get that sometimes with the paper. So I was really impressed with that. And this is the five mil. This is the writable one. You have to take your time. Now, I'm going to show you how I did this in case you're like, I need to do a thousand of those for Christmas next year. Because I tell you, I was, I was really impressed. It will take a little bit extra time to do and a few extra steps, but look, I mean, that's just gorgeous. Look at that. It was so fabulous. It is a pain in the butt though, because it's sticky. <laughs> yeah. A fire extinguisher for the craft room. Most definitely. <sighs> But uh, I was really pleased with the second one. So I have a little setup here. Okay, now you see this? It's like sticking to the stamp. Okay, that's the, the transparency sticking to the stamp. We all have that problem. And last night with Indra the butterfly from Lavinia, I had that problem. I set her down and man, she kept pulling my paper up like you wouldn't believe. I was driving myself nuts. And then it dawned on me. You know, we use the anti-static bag on our paper, right? And then we stamp and it doesn't hurt. So why not dusty, dusty? Well, add the dust. <laughs> Do a little bit of dusting. Take some of that stick off. Then you can place it and not have any sticking, okay? You see that? Totally down. Here, let me move my hands so you can see. That's totally down, and it, not, it didn't stick once. Now, because this is very staticky, you'll want to be extremely careful, okay? Because it's a pain in the butt. Okay, we're going to grab our memento. Oh no, not memento, you dork. <laughs> okay, I need to clean that off. No, that's alcohol. What <laughs> emboss, not decorate. I should have stamped it on another sheet of paper. Okay. There is heat safe acetate available too. Oh, but I'm sure, is it more expensive than the, <laughs> the other one? I'm cheap. I got to do this on a budget. <laughs> okay, so I did put my little handle on my Versa Mark. Oh, yeah, look at that. I'm so excited. Okay, so we have it stamped. Pretty good, I think. It's harder to tell when it's clear. And then we just tap her down. Thanks for stopping by, Jerry. Have fun getting your grocery order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stays on. Yeah. Stays on would be good if you're wanting to do a silhouette image. Um, the memento would definitely wipe off. But I wanted to do a... And see how it just lifted a little bit. And I can see there's a little spot 
moved there. But I'm afraid it moved it too much. So there's just going to be a little teeny spot. But that's okay. I'm going to be all right with that. Because it's just going to be a little sample. Okay. So what I did is I attached it to a white sheet of paper. I did the anti-static on it. Okay. We're going to grab our little tray. And we're just going to do our sprinkles on there just like we would before. Now you can see it's staticky. Even though we used our anti-static, that stuff, it's a little more tricky. But if you tap a little harder, okay. Now, I think in the future, what I'm going to do is actually tape this down to the thing so that it doesn't pull up so easy so that I can do a second, a second uh, stamping. But it does come off fairly easy if you give it your extra little tappies. Okay, so let me clean this up because otherwise I will have it all over. Okay, so if you guys want to turn down your volume, I'm going to turn on the heat gun. Okay. Now, here's the other thing. When you turn on your heat gun, let it warm up. Don't go at this thing with a cold heat gun. Okay, let it warm up a few. Flick it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I flicked it. <laughs> I had powder all over yesterday. It was crazy. Okay, so all I do is I let it blow against my hand and wait for it to heat up. So with this, I gave it a light go across the top just to kind of warm it up, okay? Not staying in one spot at all. You want to keep moving, warm it up, get it turned over, and then start heating it from the bottom. And keep it moving okay because you don't want to burn a spot in your paper okay warm it up on the top go underneath It is a little bit longer because you have to take your time. You don't want to melt anything. That doesn't need to be melted. Okay. Fine tuning any spots. And I'm just slowly going in. And that's it. You just keep it moving. And I have a little bubble of something in there. I don't know what it is. Come here, Pin. I need to borrow you. Well, there was something actually in my powder right there. Oh, well. Okay. So, and that's that. So, that's the five mil. You know, if you're on a budget, you can do that. You just have to take your time to do. Just be patient. Even if you have the heat-resistant one, be patient with that too, okay? Um, I didn't try heat embossing on the Apollo because this is less expensive 
And if I mess it up, I would rather mess this up than my Apollo, which definitely will be my hot foil, or not hot foiling, my toner foiling acid or transparency, okay? And you just peel, <laughs> maybe, peel your stuff off, clean it, okay? Dust it off and you can trim the little specks that stayed. Just know, you know, you're probably going to have a little bit of stuff that stays. Will that come off? Let's find out. I got a little bit of alcohol here. Let's see if we can clean these little specks off. Oh, look at that. I don't know if it's the alcohol or the scrubbing with the rag. <laughs> but you can clean off some of those little specks. If you get a little too many extras on there. Oh yeah. See, I just wiped his little tootsie off. <laughs> so you can do that. And then you've got a great base to, you know, go in there. Do some alcoholing over the top of it or underneath it. I should have probably done it underneath it. Ooh. That's interesting. I don't think I've actually alcoholed on top of a heat embossed. Lighten that up. Ooh, I like that. So you can alcohol ink right on the top of it too. How exciting is that? <laughs> Look at that. How clever is that? It doesn't look very good on that though. Do we have black? I need a colored sheet of paper. Oh yeah. Put it on a plaid or something. Ooh, look at that. I'm liking it. I'm liking it, people. I got a new project I need to work on. <laughs> so is there any questions? Anybody want to see something again that you didn't understand? Or Yes, alternate top to bottom. Thank you very much, Miss Nancy. Okay. I feel like my comments all stopped. We call it Tartan in Scotland. Hi, Irene. That's right, you guys do, don't you? You use them on your kilts and stuff and your your other pretties. All righty. Well, I think we did good. Look, it's an hour. <laughs> Just in awe. Thank you, Aline. I'm I'm excited. I mean, you could do all sorts of stuff and then you know, use your dies to cut out circles and make ornaments with these. Ooh, right? I got one of those sitting around. <laughs> I need a bigger ornament. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. But wouldn't that be fun? Definitely, probably wouldn't do browns, but like reds and greens and then do a silver underneath. This is the Lavinia um, reindeer. Do I have her little package sitting here? Of course not. Why would I have her package handy? Yeah, it's from Lavinia Stamps. And it's, I do believe it's the large reindeer. 
And I think I think she's just darling. <laughs> My energy is tremendous because <laughs> I showered. <laughs> I got all refreshed. <laughs> I got to be clean for my friends, right? <laughs> I like to shower just before I go on. It's kind of relaxing and gets the mind, sometimes it gets the mind to just settle and think about what I need to work on. But then there's a couple of times when it's like, oh, I need to do this. And I'm like, wait, I got to scale it back. But I'm excited that we can heat emboss on our transparency. Again, check out Nancy Stamps Amazon shop. It is in my description down below. The um, specialty papers is where you wanna go for the butterfly, or <laughs> for the, the papers, the accent opaque papers and the transparency films. If you do a live next, Nancy, I'll I'll pop right over. <laughs> you guys want to see Nancy? Should we shut down and go invade hers? <laughs> yep, definitely, Irene. I always um, let the live stay up. They're part of my channel <laughs> forever and ever. <laughs> Again, um, and Nancy found out that this is actually a moth. It is a type of moth, um, and it's Indra from Lavinia. This one is, um, oh, do you, Linnea Haskin, are you asking for hot foiling from Nancy on hers when she goes live? Because I just did toner foiling a little bit at the front of my video. Well, it was more reveal on different papers. But I'm going to say goodbye, my friends. And we will head over to Nancy's channel. Ooh, the jelly plate with stencils. Yes. I love the jelly plate. I might actually play along. Because my jelly plate is right there. All right, everyone, let's head on over to Nancy's channel. And I will post that, maybe. Where's my window? Thinking chat. That's where we're going, my friends. To Nancy's channel. Thanks for everybody for stopping by. Laters. Okay, end stream. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Then we do the stop. End your live.